We're going to talk about uh, infant resuscitations. And one of the things that goes along with an infant resuscitation, obviously, is airway and breathing. And unlike adults where it's primarily a cardiac problem, in children most of the time it's a respiratory problem that's going to cause the difficulties. To manage the airways of the children, usually you're going to start out with a bag valve mask and then perform an intubation. But either way, you're going to have to ventilate that child. Now, for most of the adult cases, you use a bag valve mask, and for many of the pediatric cases, you can as well. But for newborns and for very small infants, particularly those under 10 kilograms, there's another device we can use. It makes it a lot easier for the nurses. That's this thing, and this is called a T-piece. It's called a Neo-T. And the way it works is as, is as follows. Instead of squeezing a bag valve mask, what you're going to do is just close the valve on this device, and that will give the child the amount of respiration, the amount of pressure it needs to fill its lungs. The way it works is as follows. If you know in advance a child's coming in that's going to need to be intubated or need some bag valve mask ventilation, you can set this up in advance. But if not, it's very, very simple. This end of it has a screw, and this can screw on to the oxygen meter the same as anything else. What you do is you take this off, and this screws on. Just like anything else that would screw onto the oxygen register here. And screw it up nice and tight, and then you just turn this on, and you can take it up as high as you want. This knob here controls how much pressure you're going to give the child. Now in adults, you're mostly used to bagging them with an amount of volume. You'd say, you put someone on a ventilator and say, I want this person to have a tidal volume of 450 or 500. In children, you don't do that. And the reason is, if you look at volume, a lot of it goes into just extending the tubing here. And a child's got such small tidal volumes that unless you have very rigid tubing, all you're going to do is ventilate the tubing. So the way you do it is by pressure. Most of the time, it's going to take 20 to 25 centimeters of water to expand the child's lungs and allow them to breathe. So instead of saying, I want you to give a child this much volume, you say, I want you to give a breath until you get to a certain pressure then stop and let the child exhale. You can also set peep, so you would say, for example, a small child would say, I want you to set the ventilator up so we're getting a peak pressure of 20, 25 centimeters of water. So that's called the PIP. Peep inspiratory pressure is your PIP. And then you might put three to five centimeters of peep on top of that. So what it does is it gives a breath until you get to that 25 centimeters of pressure, and then it stops and lets the child exhale. If you're trying to do that with a bag valve mask, that's very difficult. Now, there's something called a Mapleson that's got a little manometer on it that can help you with that, but this kind of solves that whole problem, and it works as following. I can set the amount of pressure I want the child to get by looking at this valve here. Green's going to be on the low side, and then as I go up, I go into the yellow, and then if I'm really desperate, I can go into the red. Most of the time, you're going to be in the lower end of yellow, maybe upper end of green. And sometimes what's going to happen is, especially if it's a newborn, you may need to give a little bit of more pressure early on to get the lungs open, and then you'll drop it back down. So say I've got a child here that's in respiratory distress, I'm bringing the bag valve mask up. The way I would do it is I'd, I'd look at the child and say, you know what, I need about 20, 25 centimeters of uh, water to do that. So I look on here, and it's going to be probably somewhere in the lower end of the yellow is what I'm going to do. Now we go back to here. Same scale here. Green, yellow, and red. And somewhere in the upper end of the green, lower end of yellow, you can see there's a 20. I'll turn around this way so you can actually see it. There's a 15, 20, 30. These are your centimeters of water. It's approximate, but it's in the ballpark. So you would take this, put your mask on it. I've already set this to match here. And this valve here will allow me to deliver some peat. Now, early on, you're not going to be using any peat. You just want to get them ventilated. You put the mask on the child and push this down and you'll see as the breath is delivered this will move. Now unfortunately because of the way the mannequin is built you can't get a seal so I'm just going to seal it with my hand here and you'll notice if I push my thumb over here it delivers 20 centimeters of water. Now if I decide I want to go up to 25 I come back here I increase this a little bit put my thumb on here and you can see now I'm getting up to 25 centimeters of water. I want to give a breath I put my thumb here I give my breath I relax let the child exhale breath and then relax. Now you notice we're going down to zero. Suppose I want to add a little bit of peep. I start to turn this in. So I put this up. Not enough. Turn it up a little bit more. And now you can see I'm beginning to deliver some peep. If I turn this up a little bit more, 
I've got five of peat. So now I'm ventilating this child with about 25 centimeters of water and five of peat. So each time I put my thumb on here, I'm going to deliver 25 centimeters of water. When I take it off, I'm going to have about five of peat. I can dial this down if I think it's too much. I'm going to then use blood gases and whatnot to be able to manage the rest of it. Once I intubate the child, I can take the bag valve mask off and this fits over the end of the ET tube and I can do the same ventilation with that as well. Okay, so I can ventilate through a mask or through the ET tube. If the ET tube is on there, I have a seal, same kind of thing. And I've got my five centimeters of heat. Now obviously you're going to make some small adjustments when you move from a bag valve mask to it. But the nice thing about this is if you are the nurse or someone helping with the resuscitation, you don't have to worry about how much you're squeezing the bag. All you need to do is close the valve. This will move. I'm going to give you a little bit of resistance there. So if I close my valve, it'll move, and I take my th finger off. So I don't have to worry about my tidal volume or anything else. I'm managing this child. Now if I decide I'm giving too much pressure in there, I can then go back over here and drop it down. And a lot of times when you start ventilating these children, particularly if they have they're a newborn or they've got a lot of secretions in there. It takes a higher pressure to get them started and then you can back down your pressure later on. One other thing to notice is in the valve there's, or in the bag, there's this little thing. And the way this works is as follows. If you happen to have a setup where you don't have the ability to screw this into the wall and you have to work off of something that just has a nipple attachment to it. And there are some things, particularly some portable tanks and whatnot where you can't uh, get this screwed on. This will screw onto here. This will then wedge into here, turn your oxygen on, and again, you can manage it exactly the same way as you did before. And if I seal this, I can ventilate them. And that's it. A very simple way to ventilate children uh, and a real nice way for the nurse to feel very comfortable, the techs feel very comfortable that they're doing a good job in oxygenating a child. Thank you.